My name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to do a batch process, which allows us to take an action and apply it to several images all at once. Here's how it works. With Photoshop Open, you could choose File, Automate, Batch. This brings up a new window, and you can walk through it. First off, you need to pick a set that contains your action, and then pick a look that you want to apply. Now, I'm going to go to the image effects here and use the aged photo look. Next, I need to choose some images. Now, if I had selected in bridge, I could have chosen bridge, but in this case, I'm going to use a folder. I'll click the choose button and navigate to the folder. There it is called batch and click choose. Now, the folder could be called whatever you want. I just called it batch to make it easier for me to find it. If you need to, you could tell it to go ahead and override any open commands include all subfolders within, and I recommend that you go ahead and suppress any openings or color profile warnings so it just keeps going along. I can then choose a destination. I'm going to say save and close into the same folder, or pick a new folder so your original images remain untouched. That's usually a better idea. So we'll click choose here, and we'll make a new folder called processed, and click create and choose it. Now, if you want to, you can actually rename what you're working on, and you have the option here of saying the document name plus the extension, or in this case, I'm going to type in the extension down here, but say that this is custom text, and we'll call this modified. There we go. And so now it's going to take the original file name plus put the word modified and add the extension afterwards. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to make sure it's compatible with both Mac and Windows, and that I don't want to stop for any errors, so just log those to a file. Let me click the Save As button, and tell it where to store those. I'll put it in the same folder. There we go. Look it over from top to bottom. Make sure that everything's all right, that you've got the correct action chosen from the right set. If you need to do more than one action, you can actually do that as well simply make an action in the Actions panel that plays back multiple actions. Create a new action, select the first action you want, click Play, select the next action, click Play, and you can actually record one action that plays back several others. Now, this looks great. I've got everything selected. I've looked it over from top to bottom. I'll click OK, and it's going to go ahead and run those images. Now, first time through, it's going to go ahead and ask you, and notice it stops. And this gets a little tricky, and this is one reason why I don't like the batch process command. Notice in this case, it actually came to a stopping point. It started with JPEGs, and now that it's a layered file, it wants to go ahead and save them as a TIFF because it has layers, while JPEGs do not. So you have a choice to make here. You can either go ahead ahead of time and convert all of these images, or sit here and just keep hitting the return button, which kind of defeats the purpose of the batch process. I'm going to press Escape really quick here, and just hit Stop, and close this document. What we're going to do is actually modify this a bit. So let's go ahead instead and choose File, Scripts, Image Processor. I'll choose a folder. In this case, there's the Batch folder. Great. And I'll say Save to the same destination. Yes, do make them TIFF files and run an action. So from the image effects, I could choose aged photo if I want, or maybe something else like sepia tone. There we go. Looks all good. I'll click run, and it will also do a batch process. Now if I want to see that progress, I could switch on over to bridge, and there's my target folder. If I open that up, I see that, sure enough, it's processing all of those images and making them into sepia-toned TIFF files. So, there are two ways to invoke a batch command. One is File Automate Batch, and I personally find that there's really no benefit to it compared to using the Image Processor script. So, you can use the Image Processor script and pick an action to get the results that you need. Be sure to experiment with both, find out which one you're comfortable with, and then put it into action. For understanding Adobe Photoshop, my name's Rich Harrington.